Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We did it. We knocked out another doubleheader. 2022 Bowman Chrome Baseball Hobby Edition doubleheader. Random Team 3. All card ship. A lot of great stuff here. So let's get going. Big thanks to the people who bought their spots straight up. And thanks to the thanks to the people who took part participated in those filler breaks. Congrats again to the people who won spots in the filler. And all 30 baseball teams are in. We're using PsychicScience.org because Ram.org is acting a little weird today. So we're doing the, using this tonight. All right. And using some live dice right there. And for names and teams, one and a three four times. One, two, three, and four. Got Michael down to Joshua. You can see the timestamp right there. Is the minute, take a look at the minute mark on that. All right. Uh, one and a three, four times the teams. One, two, three, and four. We got Tigers down to the White Sox. Ooh, now you're talking, Des. Maybe some Jaspi uh, logo dice? That'd be pretty cool. Michael with the Tigers. Joe with the Yankees. Joshua, Mets, Twins, Rockies, Brew Crew. Joe, Giants and Padres. Ryan with the Reds. Sean with my Dodgers. Chris with the Mariners. Joe with the Marlins. Ryan G with the Halos. Dylan with the Royals. Matthew with the Cardinals, A's, and Cubs. Alex with the Nationals. Matthew with the Orioles. Joshua with the Pirates and Rangers. James with the Red Sox. Joe with the Rays. Matthew A with the Diamondbacks, Matthew S with the Guardians, Joshua with the Braves, Joe with the Phillies, Michael with the Astros, Joshua with the Blue Jays, and the White Sox. All right, and now let's sort by uh, alphabetized by team, and we're going to pause the video for a few moments. When we come back, we're going to see if there's a, we'll see if there's any trade. Stick around, BRB. All right, welcome back, everybody. No deals were done, so settle in. We've got a long break to go. Here on Thursday, the 15th, my thir your Thursday, my Friday. And thanks, everyone, for getting in on it and for making this happen. I appreciate it. Appreciate the late-night efforts, late-night rally by Joshua and Michael and everybody filling that filler pack. Where's Alex Donald? Alex! Wake up, Alex! He's, he's been talking about that doubleheader all day. I don't want him to miss it live if he's, if he's awake. I think he's on the, I want to say Alex is on the West Coast. Yes, there he is. All right, I was going to say, I, I'm pretty sure you're on the West Coast, right? I was, like, I was like, he can't be asleep yet. Nationals, that's a good draw too. That's right, yeah, yeah. I thought you were. He's not asleep yet. Even on a school night, it's not that late. On the West Coast. Oh, you know what? Sorry. You can fast forward through this part if you're re-watching this video. If you're watching live, you're just stuck with me. I want to take this Bowman Chrome Hobby. I just want to take this out of inventory. If I don't do it now, I'll forget and I'll screw up the numbers. And that's what, 12, 24 boxes, nice. All right, well, settle in, ladies and gentlemen. This is gonna pretty much take us to the, uh, to the end of the broadcast. We're gonna do a quick filler pack after that. And as I promised, if that third promo break, museum collection, flawless, or that two case team random, If one of those fills tonight, or, or more, uh, we won't be able to do the break until tomorrow. We just run out of time for the breaking part of it, but I'll still run the promo. I'll still give away the money. A little compromise. I'll still give away the money. You'll just have to wait until tomorrow, but I'll still do it. Jason will be live tomorrow with the new releases, and you can start the day off with whatever fills tonight.
Not too many coasts in the Midwest, Sheila. All right, uh, you know, in these longer breaks, we generally wander off into different bits of conversation, but we got to start with baseball talk first before we, we, we go into something else. Um, Carlos Rodon agreeing to a deal with the Yankees. What does everyone think about that? Let's get everyone's take on that. Yankees agreeing to sign, uh, agreeing to Carlos Rodon's, he wanted six or seven years, and the Yankees are like, sure. To a guy that had two great seasons last two, last two years, but really not much before. That. No, I don't think, yeah, Boo Yankee says, Alex, I don't think Dan's going to sign with anybody yet. Well, now that Correa is with the Giants, you know, it's looking like Dansby will be the next shortstop domino to fall, the next bigger contract to go. I don't think it's going to be as big as any of the other shortstops, but I'm sure he's happy that the market worked out that way because I feel like he can get a, get a deal done as well. All right, there's Bobby Witt Jr. for the Royals. So uh, you got to think that whoever missed out on the, the Correa, Bogarts, Trey Turner sweepstakes are probably looking at, at Dansby Swanson. Dodgers would do it if he, if he wanted to do a short deal and take a bite of the free agent apple again. There's Luis. Oh, raised, by the way, is Joe Simone. Luis Rodriguez to 250 for the Dodgers. That's for Sean Maddock. Wander Franco for the raise as well. Also for Joe. Luis Rodriguez goes to Sean Maddock. Got randomized my Dodgers. And for Boston, there's Sedan Rafaela, 307 out of 499, refractor autograph for James Hanna, who got randomized the Red Sox. We've got Roismar Quintana to 199 for Alex Donnelly and the Nationals. But I wonder, you know, maybe some teams are like, oh man, you know, with so many big shortstop names being, well, now that these shortstops are locked up, what if Dansby just goes, hey, I'm gonna, I'll take a short three-year deal with somebody, or maybe a two and an opt-out or something like that, just so I can get a bite at the free agency app will really raise my stock, and I could be another $300 million shortstop, you know? Chilo, who's our resident Royals fan, with his daily Royals report. Royals signing guys no one's heard about, but he's trusting the process. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, and Dennis is saying and the Yankees still won't win at all. Yeah, it might be, that, might, that might still be true. Still, still a bit of a... A little bit of a crapshoot once it gets into the playoffs. Alex is hoping that Dansby would, I think, would fit nicely in Seattle. New manager saying the guys they need is basically already there. Young guy grit, right. Why not develop the next guy that's going to get a $300 million contract? They got Bobby Witt Jr. there. But yeah, we'll see. That's formidable pitching staff, though, for the Yankees. Is Aaron Judge not named captain yet? I'm sure he will be in due time. Spring training rolls around, make it all official. 
I saw a little bit of news on MLB Network where they were like, uh, Michael Conforto is looking for a short-term deal to maybe turn that into a long-term deal. You know what? That sounds like the sort of deal the Dodgers would do. Before his injury, I mean, he was a one-time All-Star. You know, at best, he could be good for like 250, 250, 30 home runs, that kind, that kind of thing. 30 doubles. Decent outfield. Decent defense. We got Yendry Rojas for Joshua and the Pirates. Thanks, Josh, for getting this going. I appreciate it. The gang appreciates it. They appreciate you. There's Alex De Jesus, 299. Speckle for the Dodgers, Sean Maddock. Jose Ramirez to 150 for Cleveland. That's for Matthew Shira. I thought once he signs that deal, you make him the next cap. No, just like right then and there? I get, I don't know. I don't know how that process works. Is it, might be different for every team. Did I, did I read off these numbers to 299 and the blue to 150? Our shipping team, our sorting and shipping team will sleeve and top or top load those once they get that just in the interest of time. We want to move a little more quickly. Danny D'Andrade for the Twins. That's going to be for Joshua. Yeah, I saw that too, Rex. Brandon McKay signed a two-year minor league deal with the Rays. Oh, he's still with the Rays. I didn't realize he... Yeah, I feel like no one else was going to... Injuries, I think, got him. There's Colson Montgomery for the White Sox. He was supposed to be... I mean, he was on the cover of a lot of Bowman boxes... He was supposed to be another two-way player like Otani. That's how he was being touted. Joshua Edlitz with that one. But I think just a lot of injuries started creeping up and slowing him down and just really bogged down his progress. And um, yeah, I think that's that. You know, so he's still a work in progress. Could be a late bloomer, but. Definitely a work in progress. But a lot of times that free agency could be a little weird. You gotta sometimes you gotta go with the guy that the guy that you develop. You know, it's it's harder for teams to just get a guy they don't know and pay him. Although this offseason is a little bit different, but but you know the, these big contracts with, with, with people you don't know, like think about it. Xander Bogarts came up with the Red Sox, developed by the Red Sox. He knows the owners, he knows the front office, he knows the the coaches. People are checking in with him all the time. Blah 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 blah. You know, and then you play there, you play successfully in, at Fenway. And that team really knows you. Trainers know you. Doctors know you. You know, the, the team travel secretaries know you. Equipment managers. All these people. There's a certain comfort with that. So, th I mean, think about how odd it is where, where you're, you're, you're San Diego and you're signing this guy for 13 years. What do you really know about this person? Unless some of the front office people had some relationships with him previously. But you're just basically talking to him, maybe doing a quick one-day visit with him, saying, hey, how do you like it here? What do you think? You just do a day-long interview, and then, I mean, obviously, the, the stats are out there, but you don't know what kind of person he is. There's Colin Burns, Speckle Auto to 299. That's for the O's. That'll be for Matthew Shira. So that gets that gets pretty that gets pretty interesting. Just dropping that big that kind of money for those, for for someone that you hardly know. What if the chemistry doesn't work out? You know, 
this isn't like MLB the show. You can't just sign everybody, put it together, and have the numbers work out. You know, what if what if him and Tatis Jr., who also has another double double digit year contract, what if they don't like each other? These guys, no opt outs, no uh, no trade clauses. What if they don't like each other? Ooh, gold speckled. Michael Burroughs, 29 out of 50. Good looking card for Joshua and the Pirates. But yeah, that, that's the risk, right, Michael? It's just like, that's the risk. Zach Veen refractor to 499. Rockies, that'll be for Joshua. Thirty-five out of two fifty. Yeah, hopefully that's the case. You should be happier when your team's better. What if there's a? I don't know, but obviously, you know, if you're the GM, you know, winning cures all all disagreements, right? So I guess the idea is, well, you know, when you're winning, no, there there won't be any. But I don't know. I don't know if there's a personality clash. Who knows? I mean, you're committing a long time. Way, way back in the day, you know, when Kershaw was becoming a free agent for the first time, there was like, there was like some extension talk that would make him a Dodger for life, and it was going to be like a 15-year deal or a 12-year deal or something crazy like that, and he'd be the highest paid pitcher for a long time, this and that. Be the biggest contract of its time, sort of thing. And he didn't take it. And I think he opted to, to take a shorter deal. I think it was like a six or seven year deal. Still a lot of money, but a shorter deal. And the last few couple of years, it's just been, you know, 25, 20, 25 million dollar contract at a time, which I think has worked out for him. I think if you do the math, I think he's actually made a little bit more money than that contract would have given him or some, something like that. Vince Scully, former uh, RIP, former uh, TV broadcaster for the Dodgers since, since the Brooklyn days. Um, I think he was on year-to-year -year deals. As well, Dodgers have made him offers. Hey, give me, give me years, give me a number, and we'll we'll make it work. It's Chris Buckholtz with Seattle. I think Vince Gully for the longest time went year to year. There's Matt Manning, green to ninety nine for the Tigers. That'll be for it'll be for Michael P and a Julio Rodriguez rookie card. No, yeah, Kershaw's doing fine. Got a Spencer Torgelson refractor. There's a good bounce back candidate. We want to see that. And there's Daniel McIlvenny for James and the Red Sox. Gilo saying I'm the I'm the Vince Scully of Group Ray. I'd like to think so. I try to pattern some of my uh, try to pattern some of my my broadcasting of breaks with what I've learned from Vince Scully to 125. You know what, th one, th one thing Vince Scully used to do, he, uh, when there's a big home run or something like that, he would stay silent, he wouldn't say anything. Let the crowd noise, you know, fill the, you know, fill the broadcast. And so, there's Yankil Fernandez for Rockies, Josh, and. Ryan Don Cohn for the Dodgers, Sean Maddox. So that's why sometimes when there's a big hit, I don't need to be yelling and screaming. 
These shimmers, by the way, not numbered, so that's why I'm breezing by those, but all card ship. Um, but yeah, you know, I don't need to yell and scream. The card will do the talking, you know? Oh, SGC doing a little special. That's pretty good. Check it out. I do remember Clay Buckholz. I think we looked at the back of the card run one time, and I think he, there was nothing, I don't know if, oh, it wasn't an autograph. I guess next time I spot a Buckholz card, we'll do it. I don't think he's related to him. Clay Buckholz might be too, too young to have a kid that would be, unless he had a, unless he had a kid really young. Nice, that's a good deal, Michael. Just for Bowman stuff, Bowman Chrome stuff, or any Bowman stuff? Hmm. You know, 23rd. Hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll remind someone, but feel free to send another message again. Twenty third, that seems to be a while. Right. Yeah, well, listen. It's only uh, it's only horde. The reds are only bad if they don't hit, Ryan. If it was just nonstop reds hits. No one else was hitting. If the monster teams don't get anything, which is possible, then the reds aren't so bad. Now I will tell you that. That some shipping, just because of the holidays, is, is going to get a little crazy. Even from as far back as the 23rd. Three forty six out of four ninety nine, Jack Herman. There's an O'Neill Cruz rookie card. And Alec Baum. To 250. Pirates is for Joshua. The O'Neill Cruz and the Pirates Auto. Joe Simone with the Phillies. Oh, Christian Vicaris, I'm one of the guys we're looking for. Matthew Shiraz, Cleveland. There's Dylan Carlson to $2.99. And 15 out of 150, Edison Paulinho. Boston Red Sox, James Hanna. Although I think the Reds, in a two-case break, I think still would have been a couple hundred dollars. I don't think you. I don't think you were minus too much. What's the What's the cost of the break? Two thirty-five. I think the Reds still would have been like. A two hundred dollar team maybe in a dual case break. It's Blaze Jordan two ninety nine. So dollar wise, I don't think you you missed out too much by that much. You're not angry about the cost. You're ang you're just angry about the Reds. All right, I get it. Hey, I mean. What, Red, Reds aren't making big free agent moves anytime soon, Ryan? Those guys, these guys will eventually, those Reds prospects here in Bowman Chrome will eventually be called up. Maybe boost their value. Maybe sell high.
Rex, did you say possible younger brother for Clay Buckholz? I just looked up Clay Buckholz. He's 38 years old. I think he has a brother that's 18 years younger than him. I, I suppose it's possible. I shouldn't. I shouldn't say. I shouldn't say that. But I mean, most of these guys are what between between 18 and 20 years old or something like that. At 38, you think, I mean, unless he had a kid, right, at like 18, 18 or 20, when he would be like 18 or 20, I guess, I mean, we'll, we'll look. Next time I run to a Buckholds card, I'll take a look. Could be. There's Wilfred Veras. White Sox. I think age difference between David and Derek, maybe five or six years. There's Ronald's brother, 195 out of 499. Luis Angel and Brian Acuna. Brian Acuna on the Twins. They're a little more, that, 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 that age range makes sense. There's Ronald. All right. Thanks, Ryan Harold. Good to see you, man. I'll see you. Uh, today's my Friday, but I'll see you at some point next week, I'm sure. There's Emmanuel Valdez. Yeah, maybe in a, this is for the Astros, Michael P. with the Strohs. Michael saying, ah, oh, you're 19 years old. You're playing for the Tuscaloosa Barons, you know. Man. One thing leads to another, and there you go. Matthew Shira with the A's. Ricardo Cabrera for the Reds, 47 out of 250, Purple Shimmer, and Christian Vaquero for Alex Donnelly and the Nacionals. All right, next box. Yeah, they got, they got, a, they got a pretty good farm system. Another box, another two autos. I guess I am looking at the Clay Buckholz Wikipedia page. I feel like they would have, I feel like they usually put family info here. Doesn't say anything about him having a, a son in Major League Baseball. Or a brother that's like 20 years younger than him. Clay Buckholz had that, had that one great season. He was an all-star. He finished like top 10 in Cy Young, top six in Cy Young voting. In that 2010 season with the Red Sox made 28 starts, 173 innings. Went 17 and seven with a 2.33 ERA. That's pretty good. Hundred and twenty strikeouts. All right, there's Benjamin Cowles. 19 out of 100 atomic refractor. 
It's true. It is not a. It's not a common name. Although you know what it could be. It could be like. Well, now now I gotta look this up. It could be like an uncle, right? Clay Buckholtz's dad may have a younger brother that had a younger kid. There's C.J. Abrams, 133 out of 199. Now I'm looking for another Buckholz card. <laughs> right, so yeah, like a cousin, that could be it. C.J. Abrams for the Padres, that'll be for Joe, and Yankil Fernandez for the Rockies. So the net, ooh, red coming, ooh, that's a nice one too. Is that a proper red, not a fake red? There's Jake Rucker for the Twins, purple chrome, 161 out of 250. That will be for Joshua. The Goldschmidt Refractor to four ninety nine will go to Matthew Shira and the Cardinals. And here is Luis Angel Acuna Red. Red Ranger going to Joshua. Five out of five, Josh Edlitz with Ronald Acuna's younger brother. He's supposed to be from what I'm from what little I've heard, I think he's supposed to be pretty good too. Joshua. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo. Number eight Rangers prospect, yeah. Best defensive infielder in the baseball America system. Speedy runner, tough to whiff, sneaky power. And I think the youngest is on the Twins. All right, another box. A fairly decent case so far. Got a little orange there peeking out. I mean, maybe next case, Super Fractor? Are we feeling that? Oh yeah. yeah, we're not we're not going to go anywhere for a little bit. A lot of cards. Super in this case, yeah, we do have four boxes plus this fifth one right here in front of me. It's possible. That'd be a hell of a case. Got a got a red and a super. All right, onwards. There's Mason Jar Hour. For the Rays, that's going to be Joe Simone. <laughs> Got Trey Sweeney to 125.
That's for the Yankees. That's going to go to Joe. We got Willie Fanas from the Bronx to Queens. It's going to go to Joshua and the New York Mets Metropolitans. And nice orange, Caleb Killian, Arizona Fall League card, 10 out of 25. Matthew Shira, Cubbies. Yeah, I like the I like the Rays farm system as well. They've got a lot of guys. Torkelson Tigers, Michael P, Wander Franco, Joe and the Rays, Bobby Witt Jr. That's for Dylan and the Royals. All right, final third of the case coming up. Four boxes to go. We got some end of season uh, farm system rankings according to MLB.com. This is written on late August of 2022. Orioles, they're ranking number one with top prospects: Gunnar Henderson, shortstop, third baseman; pitcher, right-hander Grayson Rodriguez; shortstop Jackson Holiday; outfielder Colton Kowser; infielder Jordan Westberg; and DL Hall, lefty. This is the third straight time, this is the, the writer writing, this is the third straight time the Orioles have landed the top spot and it's now five ranks in a row. Baltimore has had a top 10 farm system. They stay atop the rankings even after losing Adley Rushman to graduation as the O's still have the two of the top four prospects in all of baseball. Three in the top 15, six in the top 100 overall. And having number one overall pick in the, I guess the previous year's draft doesn't hurt. Top end talent, depth up and down the system, courtesy of the entire draft, and renewed efforts in Latin America. Their preseason, Orioles preseason rank was one, and now their, their uh, postseason end of season rank they, they end at one so that also suggests that none of those prospects kind of had down years and in, in their farm systems got promoted where they need promotion so on and so forth cubs matthew shira yeah bet the o's to win the world series three years from now yeah i don't i don't think i don't know maybe you can get some offshore to make a line for you There's Houston, that's for Michael P. Julio Rodriguez goes to, uh, goes to Seattle. And Chris Buckholtz, 86 out of 199. Juan Bin Cho, the South Korean. And from St. Louis, we go to Toronto, Esteban uh, Machado autograph. So Cardinals, that's Matthew Shira, will get Cho. And Machado going to Toronto, that'll be for Joshua. And Jordan Lawler for Arizona, that'll be for Matthew Akins, 23 out of uh, 199. And Luis Meza, 
One out of 99 for Toronto. Roderick Arias for New York. It's going to go to Joe. Next. Wait, were we talking about a Buckholz in this set, or were we talking about Chris Buckholz who has the Mariners? Excusing myself now. Uh, second best farm system. Their preseason rank was five. They ended at two. My Los Angeles Dodgers. Their top 100 prospects. Diego Cartaya, catcher at number nine. Bobby Miller, righty at 27. Miguel Vargas, 44. Third base outfielder. Second base outfielder, Michael Bush. Outfielder, Andy Pagas. Ryan Pepio. Gavin Stone. I think this is a reason why. Uh, well, let's read the blurb. The Dodgers continue to marry winning in the majors with churning out impact talent in the minors. They're en route. En route? En route? They're en route, en route. How would I say it? They're en route to setting a franchise record for victories for the third straight full season. This was written in August 2022. Um, and uh, top all organizations with seven top 100 prospects. Among that group, Pepio is in Los Angeles. Miller, Vargas, Bush, and Stone are all knocking on the door in Triple A. I think that's one of the reasons, a lot of reasons, about what the Dodgers are doing in uh, in free agency or in the off season, which is not much, you know, because they they spent on Mookie Betts, they spent on Freddie Freeman, you know, they got some guys under contract, some nice guys under contract, some got some guys they'll have to pay, youngsters they'll have to pay later on. There's Alba Pujols to 499. And, I, and there's Won Bin Cho, or Che Won Bin, if you want to do it in Korean. Matthew with the Cardinals. And some Cardinals fans in here a week or so ago who were really excited about his prospects. I think he's a... Yeah, became first amateur to ink with St. Louis. A lot of times these guys end up in like the, the pros before the majors even looks at him. So to get to sign an Asian kid, a Korean or even a Japanese player, to sign one of those guys out of high school, they must really saw must have saw, seen something in him. O'Neill Cruz, Pirates, Joshua. Jason Curio, Speckle, Matthew, to 299. I'm going back to the Dodger. I just think that that's their, they got they want to get under the luxury tax too. They want to be flexible payroll wise. They're more likely to be in the trade market because the luxury tax also counts for deals that you make, for the trades that you make. I think their strategy is, hey, we've got these great youngsters. We got seven in the top 100, which is more than any other team. And a lot of the, a lot of these guys are triple A guys, so let's see what they can do. And then reevaluate trade deadline. There's Ryan Reckley for San Francisco. That goes to Joe and the Giants. I think the Dodgers should be a little more active in the trade market before the season though, I would think. There may be some young guys that 
single A, double A guys if they could that they could move along. And then start working those triple A guys. I mean Bobby Miller, Miguel Vargas, Michael Bush, Gavin Stone. A lot of them, I mean half that group has a good chance at getting out of the uh There, there could be, if like let's, let's say if Diego Cartaya kills it in spring training, I mean, there's a shot that they may trade Austin Barnes, a great defensive catcher, to a team that needs a great defensive catcher, get some other guys back in return. You know, I'll have to look at that. Well, it looks like out of the top 100, Luis Rodriguez. Because this little blurb is only showing top 100 prospects. But I, he can't be too far outside that. Third on the list, if you're curious, this article is written late August 2022. Cleveland Guardians. They started the preseason at ranked 12th farm system, ended the minor league season ranked 3 with Daniel Espino, George Valera, Gavin Williams, Brian Rocchio, and Bo Naylor as, your, uh, as their top 100 prospects. Guardians excel at signing talented young hitters and helping pitchers take their stuff to another level. Jose Ramirez, Shane Bieber are the best big league examples. And all five of their top 100 prospects fall into those two categories. The farm should make a huge impact in Cleveland shortly, with 13 of its 15 best prospects having reached double A or higher. So that's, that's another... And that's a... You know, if you're, if you're a GM, that's one of the smart things to do, right? Is is you kind of try to create windows, different windows. So here's here's a here's a group where 13 of its 15 best prospects reach double A or higher, you know, all together, right? Now there's going to be some. There's Brian Acuna. There's going to be some. Uh, you know, not all of those 13 are going to be major leaguers, right? But even let's say half of them, let's say five or six of them become regular major leaguers. That's great. Let's say if two or three of those become superstars, that's what you want to see. There's CJ Rodriguez, 15 out of 250. For the A's, that'll be for Matthew Shira. There's Lonnie White Jr., refractor to 499. Denzer Guzman, purple shimmer to 250. For the Angels, that'll be for Ryan, Ryan Gamsby. Lonnie White for the Pirates, that'll be for Joshua. There's Christian Pache for the A's. Refractor to 499 for Matthew Shira. And Yorbit Vivas. 70 out of 99. Green. Dodgers. Sean Maddock. Julio Rodriguez. Rodolfo Castro. And is that a green? Yeah. Green Chrome. Wander Franco. Joe Simone. Tampa Bay Rays. Eighty two out of ninety nine. There's Luis Rodriguez. All right. Twelve box, twelfth box, and then guess what? We got another case. So yeah, it looks like this case, we're at the 50 minute mark right now. So yeah, that should be just under an hour. And then another hour. Maybe a tiny bit longer if I start dragging a little bit. 
Cincinnati Reds are your number four. According to MLB.com, your number four ranked farm system at the end of the minor league season. Their preseason rank was 15. They climbed up to four. Top 100 prospects, Ellie De La Cruz, shortstop third base at number 15. Noel B. Marte, shortstop at number 18. Edwin Arroyo, shortstop, number 55. Sam Cam Collier, third baseman, number 63. And Matt McLean at number 76. The Reds, oh, this is, this is good writing right here. The Reds restocking, the Red Stockings? I have a Red Sox reference, but the Reds restocking has come in a, very, a variety of ways. Their last two first round draft picks are in the top 100. And international signees Ascension give them one of the most exciting prospects in baseball. But it's been the trade market where Cincinnati has restocked its system the most, with nine of its top 30 and eight of the top 15 coming in deals. In addition to that intriguing talent at the top, this is the deepest the system has been in some time. And then, of course, with these teams, will, the, will they spend the money to, to keep these players or add to a young crop? There's Evan Lee, 213 out of 299. Alex Donnelly, Washington Nationals. Marco Luciano to 125. Might have to move off that position with uh, Carlos Correa there now. Christian Yelich, blue, to 150 for the Brew Crew. It's going to go to Joshua. Matt Manning refractor to four ninety nine. Joey Gallus spilling out there, and there's Antonio Pinheiro for the Brewers. Joshua. Matt Manning will go to the Tigers. That'll be for Michael P. Keep Brian Hayes Pirates. Uh, 42 out of 199? Yeah, out of 199, that aqua lava parallel. All right. One case down, another case to go. Big auto recap at the end. Uh, Diamondbacks pretty pretty much unchanged. They started the season at four. They ended at five. Uh, Arizona is the only organization with three prospects ranked among the pipeline's top 13 overall. Corbin Carroll, Drew Jones, right? Andrew Jones's kid. Jordan Lawler, Brandon uh, Fott. Um, yeah, three prospects ranked in the among the top 13. Following the cut that, following the uh, addition of Drew Jones and the impressive years of Corbin Carroll and Jordan Lawler, it's a far draw from them to Fat, who looks like he has the best chance to emerge from a glut of Double A and Triple A arms to become a bona fide major leaguer. And in, uh, in Phoenix, 
but don't read too much into that one spot drop. Dimebacks have served, held serve as a solid rebuilding system that stands out more for its high ceiling talent than its depth. Rangers started the season nine, ended six. With Josh Young, Jack Leiter, it's Al Leiter's kid, I think. I think that's Al Leiter's kid. Because Zach Plesak, I think, is Dan Plesak's um, nephew. Anyway. Jack Leiter, Evan Carter, Owen White, Justin Foscu, Brock Porter. Rangers have improved their standing for the fourth straight ranking thanks to a combination of potential star talent and depth. They may have the deepest, their deepest crop of pitching prospects ever, starting with Leiter, White, Porter, Kumar Rocker, Cole Wynn, who were signed out of the draft for a combined $21.5 million. The well-stocked and position player as well, led by Young, Carter, Foscu, and Luis Angel Acuna. I mean, Rangers have spent a lot of money on players. There's Logan Cerny, 22 out of 499 refractor autograph for the Phillies, Joe. Um, but I still think, you know, they could have a lot of young... Uh, it is Outlighters, kid. Okay, yeah, they could have a lot of. They could have a lot of young players surrounding that that pricey core. And since those young players will be all team controlled and all that, that could be a chance for them to spend even more money, which is kind of crazy to think about. We got Edison Paulino for Boston. That's going to be for James Hanna. Speckle autograph, 38 out of 299. I like how the, the speckle parallels pop nicely. Ryan Mountcastle, purple chrome to 250. It'll be for Matthew and the Orioles. Team seven, Pirates. Started the season at seven, ended the season ranked seventh best farm system according to MLB.com. Because of Henry Davis, Termar Johnson, Quinn Priester, Leover Preguero, Nick Gonzalez. This is the fourth straight time the Pirate system is in the top 10. Even though they lost O'Neill Cruz and Ronzi Contreras to graduation, they did add 2022 first rounder uh, Termar Johnson. This remains a very deep farm system, bolstered by trade acquisitions and some aggressive drafts, especially the last few years. And I think they got this was the first year of the draft lottery. Remember, this article was written in August. So this was the first year of the draft lottery. They also have a number one overall pick too. Rays rank three, drop to eight. Taj Bradley, Curtis Mead, Carson Williams. On one hand, this is the lowest the Rays have ranked since 2017. On the other hand, this is the 12th consecutive time Tampa Bay has slotted in the top 10 in MLB pipeline record. Graduation by Shane Boz, Josh Lowe, tougher years for Greg Jones, Xavier Edwards have taken a little edge off, but ascensions of Bradley and Mead are there. Yeah, Mike Tower saying, yeah, what about Henry Davis? Yeah, Henry Davis is on Pittsburgh, as we just mentioned. So what about Henry Davis? Yes, he was. There's Alex De Jesus, 105 out of 150. Uh, 
That would be for the Dodgers. Is there a follow-up to that, Mike Tower? There's Leonardo Balcazar, 29 out of 150. Oh, just calling him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely mentioned Henry Davis as their as one of their top prospects. Yeah, former number one overall pick. Uh, we I think we know this. Number twenty overall in the top one hundred. Pirates, another team where 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 teams are begging them, hey, spend some money, hold on to some of these guys, let's start building something. Now there's Ronzi Contreras, another Evan Lee for Alex. I thought you had something extra for us, Mike Tower. I was like, oh, we're going to get a Mike Tower factoid. Uh, Harry Ford, 74 out of 199. And we got a Bowman inside. I don't think we saw one of these in the first case, right? They're short printed. I don't think they're generally cases, but I guess they don't always land one per case. But here's Oscar Colas for the White Sox, Joshua Edlitz. With that one. We got Chris with the Mariners, Harry. We got Drew Baker, 175 to 199. All right, so Pirates at seven, Rays at eight, Rockies at nine. Their preseason rank was 24, and they jumped all the way up to nine, thanks to Zach Veen, Ezekiel Tovar, Adiel Amador, and Drew Romo. Rockies have been making small incremental progress up the ranks until this huge leap, putting them in the top 10 for the first time since 2017, when we only did a top 10. There weren't any big trades, but a combination of several players already in the system breaking out as top-notch prospects. Three of the four top 100 prospects systems were not on the list at the start of the season. And then a strong 2022 draft class, six from the top 100 of our top... Six of the top 100 of our draft top 250 are now Rockies. That's a mouthful. Then they added seven new names to a much deeper top 30. Rex's Cubs at number 10. Preseason rank 18, got up to 10 thanks to Pete Crow Armstrong, Brennan Davis, and Kevin Alcantara. The Cubs system hasn't been this deep since Chicago was assembling the talent that won the 2016 World Series. Though all three of their top 100 prospects are outfielders, their pitching depth, which is what they need in recent years, is also notable. Most of their best arms have been acquired in the last 13 months, including Cade Horton, Jordan Wicks, Ben Brown, Jackson Ferris, Hayden Wesniski, and Caleb Killian. Now Rex was saying earlier, that's what I'm going to say the Cubs are doing, not getting guys to rely on their farm. They should rely on the farm, though. All right. Let's keep it rolling. There's Michael Burroughs, Pirates. 26 out of 499 refractor autograph. There's Alexis Hernandez to 199. For the Cubbies, that's going to be for Matthew Shira. See, we've got some gold coming up here. Gold Jay Allen, gold shimmer, 12 out of 50 for Ryan H. and the Red Legs. They did go up. 
Rex? Their preseason rank was 18, and they went up to 10 at the end of season ranking. Although I think like most of these team, most of these rankings are based off of individual performances, not necessarily. Oh, look at that. They like double stamped this. 25 out of 499. Looks like it went through the machine twice. That'll go to the Dodgers. That'll be for uh, Sean Maddox. Oh, almost missed that. Nelson Velas the, the the stripes and then the auto kind of fools me a little bit. Nelson Velasquez. Arizona Fall League autograph going to Matthew Shira and the Cubs. It's number to 100. There's Chris Buckholtz. No, no relation to Clay. Sorry, I, th I thought we had found it. I, th I was confused. I thought we were talking about a Buckholtz in this set. That's where I got confused a little bit. And I was saying, like, man, Clay Buckholtz would have had to have a kid really early if he has a kid in Bowman Chrome. No, but our uh, Chris Buckholtz, who, who is just checking in right now, he said, no. You, I could be his father. He's 52. Your two oldest met him and hung out with Clay Buckholtz while he was in Portland. Nice kid. So we're like, hey, we got... Do you guys spell it the same? We'll be like, hey, we're Buckholtzes too. Mm. I think the bo uh, Chris, Chris saying, I think the bottle got the best of him. I don't really think he blossomed to his full potential. Yeah, we were, we were looking at his stats a little bit earlier. And there were... Uh, there were there were some dominant years there, and then continued flashes of uh, continued flashes of brilliance. All right, so well, we're, listen, we're we're out of the top ten. We're not going to go through this entire list that in depth out of the top ten, but we will go through the rest of the teams and some players here. Boston's at eleven. Preseason ranked 14th, went up a little bit to 11th. Marcelo Meyer shortstop, which maybe explains why they weren't too terribly bullish about retaining Xander Bogarts, although they could have moved Xander to like third or second or something like that. Tristan Houses, Tristan Casas, and Brian Bello. Marcelo Meyer's eighth in all of baseball, top 100, according to baseball.com, MLB.com. Tristan Casas is 26, Brian Bello is 37. Yankees preseason rank 13. And at 12, they didn't move up too much, but Anthony Volpe, number five. Jason Dominguez, 42. Oswald Peraza, 53. And Austin Wells at 87 are their guys. Yeah, I think it might be, a, it might be what, a year or two before we start seeing. We might see Jason Dominguez get a cup of coffee. That could be a hell of an outfield. Once Chase Dominguez gets up there. And then behind Wander Franco is a hit for the Phillies, William Bergola. Philadelphia, that goes to Joe. Did you hear about the, the Trump NFTs I was promoting? Promoting them as sports cards. Each is $99, and then you, each time you buy, you get a chance to win prizes. One is dinner with him. One is golf with him. That could be interesting. I read this article where where, where apparently his uh, golf etiquette is not is not that great. There's Matt Chapman the two like he drives his golf cart onto the greens and stuff like that. Maybe it's a course that he owns. He can do whatever he wants, right? If you're the owner of the course. It's Trey Turner, one forty six out of one fifty, three million dollar man. What is the what is the state of the world with NFTs? I feel like the shine has come off on those NFTs a little bit.
Jeremy Pena, nice. Rookie refractor to four ninety nine. That's for the Astros, Michael P. And Adrian Segesti. That's for uh, the Giants. That's going to be for Joe. Willie Fanas, refractor to four ninety nine. Yeah, I think so too. I think he has the uh, the course record on a lot of courses. <laughs> All right, Cardinals were 16. They're now slightly up to 13. Guys like Jordan Walker, Mason Wynn, Gordon Graceffo, Matthew Libertor, Alec Burleson, Tink Hentz are, are, are guys push him out there. New York Mets went from 20 to 14. Francisco Alvarez, Brett Beatty, Kevin Parada, Alex Ramirez. Except Francisco Alvarez, that catcher, is the number one overall in, that in, uh, in the top 100, MLB.com's top 100. Nationals went from 23 to 15. with Robert Hassel. Oh, right, that was part of the Juan Soto deal, right? Robert Hassel, Elijah Green, James Wood. Ooh, piece of candy. And Cade Cavalli. Marlins went, went from number six and dropped to 16. That must be, they must have graduated a lot of guys. No, maybe not. Gra yeah, some graduations, injuries, and disappointing performances, all right. But Yuri Perez, Max Meyer, Jacob Berry are some guys there. Number 17 is the A's. Went from 22 to 17 at the end of the year. Shea Langliers, Tyler Soderstrom, Ken Wadichuk, and Zach Geloff. I think that Sean Murphy trade must have yielded some extra prospects for them too. What happened to blockchain? I mean, I think that's the very building block of cryptocurrencies, right? Of, of Bitcoin. Blockchain's still around. For the Padres, there's Harlan Susana. That would be for Joe and the Friars. Yeah, we haven't gotten to Mariners yet, Alex. There's Wander Franco to 199. That'll be for the Rays, Joe. Use a lot of bullfrog too, Chris. Oh, you should, oh, Chris. Chris, you might be lagging behind just a little bit. I feel like we're a little time separation between our responses and, and, and your chat. Oh, the blockchain cards they put in products. Yeah, I I don't know. I think I think that might still be around. I don't, know, I don't want to talk too much about another company. Uh, Tops Bowman break. 192 out of 250, Manuel Valdez. Astros, that'll be for Michael P. Jay Allen to 299. Yeah, I mean, they're onto that now. All that sticky stuff. They're definitely on to that now, Chris. Husky Dolphins, top shot is still a thing. I think so. Not as, uh, definitely not as, as viral as it was before. I don't know, I think, I think we still have a long way to go before, before any of that sort of stuff, I think. NFTs and crypto and stuff really 
gets a bigger foothold. But hey, these, these will be the growing pains. I think, you know, could be anywhere from 10, 15, 20 years later. We'll probably probably look back to, to 2022, especially with with FTX and all that, and these crypto exchanges like struggling. And I'll bet uh, I'll bet people will look back here and just be like, man, what noobs <laughs> in 2022? It could be completely different in 10, 15 years. But with anything like this, You know, stuff like cryptocurrency. I, I think I, I don't know much about it. Just, but you know, in terms of, but from what basics I know, you know, like there are good points to it. There is a, a framework in which the world could use something like that, but it's still very much in, in baby stages. they cover this in science fiction but when when you can buy sell actual memories or are you saying when can you buy and sell actual memories I think that's what nfts are supposed to be right antonio pinheiro that actually has a space i think it works i it's i think it works as an a better as an extra layer of like maybe Copyright protection in a certain way. There's Yodani de los Santos for the pirates. That'll be for Joshua. It's to uh, 125. Yasir Mercedes twins. There's your Donnie De Los Santos autograph for the Pirates. That's for Joshua. And we've got a Blaze Jordan, 49 out of 75 for Boston. That'll be for James. All right, we are halfway through this final case. We've got about another 30 minutes to go. Should bring us, yeah, a little bit past the top of the hour. And as promised, I will still do... Yeah, I'll still do that one pack, that filler pack. It looks like we're going to leave break credit on the table, but that's that's all right. We'll save that for another time. All right, then A's were 22 into 17. We talked about them. Giants went from 11 down to 18 so, uh, with uh, Marco Luciano, Kyle Harrison as their two top 100 prospects. Though their system dipped in a little bit, they got saw some pair of high-end talents. Let's see how they work out. Brewers went from 25 to 19. Uh, thanks to Jackson Curio, number 11. Sal Freelich, number 49, Joey Weimer. Jackson Curio is one of the hits that we're looking for here in this Bowman Chrome. Manager Craig Council has actually name-checked Jackson uh, Curio as possibly being a regular contributor this year, in spite of him only being like 19 years old or something like that. Blue Jays improved by one spot from 21 to 20 thanks to Gabriel Moreno, catcher, Ricky Tideman, lefty, and Aurelvis Martinez, shortstop third baseman. And, you know, we might see Aurelvis Martinez, or Moreno, that is. I know Moreno's been blocked, actually. He's a catcher. 
She's been blocked by the Blue Jays are really deep at catcher. They could probably afford to move one of those guys at the deadline. Royals preseason rank was eight, dropped to 21. And I think that's because graduations, you know, MJ Melendez, Bobby Witt Jr., et cetera, et cetera. There's Victor Labrada, 498 out of 499 for Seattle. That's for Chris. But they still got Gavin Cross and Nick Prado in that system. Carson Williams, 47 out of 75. Joe with Tampa Bay. And there's Parker Chavers for Matthew Shira and the White Sox. White Sox? Matthew Shira with the Cubs, that is. There's Jason Curio. Drew Baker speckled to 299. Another Christian Vaccaro. All right, another box down. Dennis is saying the NFTs will probably still have to deal with name and likeness. So we'll need to obtain permission before making anything if the rights are owned, such as Shaq. He owns the right to Elvis in Maryland. I think the way around that is often is by creating unique pieces of art. So if I created, if I took a bunch of images of Shaq and then created a, a cute little collage on a foam board and put little like I heart Shaq in felt lettering, maybe made some frames around those pictures with puffy paint and sold that, I don't think I'd have to deal with name and likeness because that's an original piece of art that I created. But then again, if I think if I mass produced it, As like a poster? Is there, is there def different legal ramifications there if it's not a one-off piece of original art that's considered art and it's more for commercial gain? Then maybe you do have to run into, maybe you do run into name and likeness stuff. Almost there. Stay on target. There's Yasser Mercedes. Yas. Joshua with the twins. It's one of the big names for the twins. That's who you're looking for if you end up with the twins. Honor Franco rookie card. Yiddy Cap to 150. Joe with Miami. I think it does depend, yeah, if you're making money on it or not. I think it's just a one-off piece of art that I'm displaying as art. I think you can get away with it. If I'm mass producing it on like t-shirts, then that might be a different might be a different thing. Joe with the Yankees. Michael with the Tigers. 
There's Alexander Ovalis, 79 out of 499. Refractor autograph for TBR. Joe with the Rays. There's Matt Manning. Aqua to 199, 160 out of 199. A little bit of that lava pattern there that I think looks pretty sharp. All right, another box. Twins went from, uh, did we talk Tiger? Tigers went from 10 to 22. Jackson, Job, and Jace Young. I think that's mostly because of graduations. Riley, Green, and Spencer Torkelson are off the prospect list. Twins went from 19 to 23. Brooks Lee. Royce Lewis, Emmanuel Rodriguez, a little bit of a mixed bag farm system for the Twins. There's Alex's Mariners. Went from two down to 24 with only Harry Ford, the only player making the top 100 at number 68. But the Mariners began the year with six players in the top 100. Three, most notably top prospect Julio Rodriguez, graduated from prospect status. Two more top 100 guys. Sent to the Reds in the Luis Castillo deal. The depth of the system was aided by the addition of six members of the 2022 draft class, but winning competing does have its cost in terms of maintaining a system that has been a mainstay in the top five. But I think the Mariners fans would rather be a top five team in baseball instead of having the top five farm system in baseball. I think they're okay with that. But Harry Ford still out there. It could be could be a little Cal Raleigh Harry Ford duo. Cal Raleigh could definitely DH. Uh, with that pop in his bat, Philadelphia Phillies stayed about the same. Started at twenty six, ended at twenty five. Andrew Painter, Mick Abel, White Sox went from thirty to twenty six. Colson Montgomery is their lone top one hundred guy. Braves started the season at 27, ended at 27. Von Grissom. But obviously they lost, uh, you know, Michael Harris and Strider had all advanced, graduated. And then we'll, we'll take a look at the last two teams, last few teams. After this box, we got Jared Kalanick to 299. Bobby Wood Jr., Junior Sanchez. Autograph for Joe and the Marlins. Yeah, Alex, like, I'd rather take a top five team. I'm sick of having a top five farm system. What, what pile was I grabbing from first? There's Pedro Pineda. There's Jordan Walker to 125 for the Cardinals. That's going to be for Matthew. And there's Jordan Walker, Bowman Ascensions. Is that two in this case? We didn't get one in the last case, so maybe that's why we're getting two in this case. It's usually, uh, usually falls one per case. It's a short print. Marcelo Meyer, Purple Shimmer to 250. There's Ian Lewis for the fish, Joe Simone. Roberto Campos, 58 out of 99. Michael P. with Detroit Motor City.
All right, just a few more to go. Rounding out the bottom three farm systems, updated farm systems ranking for 2022, according to MLB.com. Article written late August of 2022. So obviously things could ch change if there have been some recent trades or something like that. But Padres went from 17th ranked to 28. Top 100 prospects are Jackson Merrill and Luis Campusano. The fact that the Soto trade didn't completely sink San Diego number 30 is a testament to where the farm system was before the blockbuster of the century. Astros, preseason ranked 29, are at 29. Hunter Brown at number 71, the writing. Yeah, I think they... Uh, I think the thing, the Astros ranked next to Lax for the fourth straight time, but that hasn't stopped them from reaching five straight ALCSs while getting contribution from homegrown talent. Yeah, I think a lot of those guys have, prospects that did have, keep getting called up. And Angels ranked last, 28 to start the season, ended at 30. Logan O'Hop, catcher at number 67. You got a lot of work to do. Yeah, guys like Joe Adele had flashed some uh had flashed had some flashes of, of maybe being somebody, but it's Graham Ashcraft, but But it hasn't materialized to the I think to the frustration of a lot of people who are who have Joe Adele in their portfolio. Ashcraft goes to Ryan Harold and the Reds. There's Randy Arozarena to two fifty for the Rays. Roderick Arias for the Yankees. There's Daniel McIlvenny for the Red Sox. That'll be for James. There's Yerlin Confidant, 299, Speckle. There's Daniel Vasquez, Green Shimmer, 39 out of 99. Two boxes to go. We're almost there. Well, so the top 100, just looking at the top 10. Now, what's the Mets catching situation? Francisco Alvarez is ranked number one. I forget who's that catcher, but I mean, they've got they've got a pretty uh, spent a lot of money. They got a pretty stacked team, and they've got a number one prospect waiting in the wings. That's a basis. MLB.com says ETA 2023. Gunnar Henderson for the Orioles. Corbin Carroll, I think, has already been playing a little bit for the Diamondbacks. Grayson Rodriguez, Anthony Volpe, Jordan Walker, Marcelo Meyer, Diego Partaya, Yuri Perez, and Jackson Curio rounds out the top 10. All right. 
right, O'Neill Cruz. I'm going to leave your keys right here. Awesome, thanks. I'll uh, see you next week. I'll see you next week, man. You too. Braves, there's Brandall Mesquita, 72 out of 75. It'll be for the Braves, Joshua. Francisco Alvarez, 94 out of 125. Just talking about him. Now he appears. That's for Joshua and the Mets. Jose Rodriguez, Joshua and the Rangers. Josuar Garcia for the Phillies, that'll be for Joe, that's to 125. Pete Crow Armstrong, 14 out of 199. And Jason Curio, Jackson's brother, who's also pretty good in his own right. And the final box, the 24th box. We're at one hour, 37 minutes. We made it. Final box, good luck. We got Orange Shimmer, Parker Shavers, 18 out of 25. Matthew Shira, nice. Love the way that orange looks, really pops. There's Uribio Angeles to 4.99. Refractor for the A's, that'll be for Matthew Shira. Okay, Shira, Shira. Whatever will be, will be. All right, last mini box, last auto, last bit of parallels. Last auto is Jackson Curio. We were just talking about him. 23 out of 99. Great way to end it. Joshua Edlitz. Working hard on filling this, uh, this double header. Gets randomized, the brew crew. And gets this guy, Jackson Curio. Right now, I'm looking at him right now. Number 10 prospect in double A, 18 years old. Estimated to come up to the big leagues in 2024. But Craig Council was talking like maybe, maybe this year. If you know your scouting grades, hit 55, power 60, run 70, arm 45, field 60, overall 60. He's pretty good. He's ranked a spot ahead of uh, Andrew Jones' kid, Drew Jones. So if you know the hype around Drew Jones, he's one notch higher on the rankings, at least for now. So that, that's, where, that's where he sits. There's Carson Williams, purple chrome to 250. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh, I am for real.
And that, my friend, does it. Nice break. Here is the recap for this doubleheader, Random Team 3, Chavers to 25, the Jordan Walker Bowman Ascensions, Yas, Wander Franco to 199, the William Bergola, the Nelson Velasquez, Oscar Colas, Bowman Inceptions, uh, Inception, Ascensions, Wander Franco Green, Caleb Killian, Arizona Fall League to 25, Got that gold speckle looks sharp, and that Jackson Curio we just pulled, and the red Luis Angel Acuna, five out of five. Strong stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for the fill. I appreciate it. Everybody who got spots in this, whether you hit or not, I still appreciate you. Thank you very much. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.